My name is Chase McCormick, and I am terrible with money. Well, that's not true. I am really good at spending it. I'm a starving artist who no longer wanted to starve. I make paintings that nobody wants to look at, music that nobody wants to listen to, clothes that nobody wants to wear, and movies that nobody wants to produce. While I initially started working in finance to fund my creative endeavors, I quickly fell in love with my new role and company. I was selected to be the new social media and events coordinator at the most fun firm in finance. While I don't know much about finance, I've certainly developed an interest to start investing in my future. That's why I thought it would be exciting for me to sit down with financial experts at our company, because if they can teach it to me, they can teach it to you. Please remember that nothing we say here should be taken as personal advice. This conversation is for entertainment purposes only. If you have questions about your financial situation, please talk to a licensed financial advisor. Now, the thing about tax loss harvesting is you cannot repurchase that investment for 30 days. If you repurchase oh, it, it's never here. Can't you can't short the stock, off. ladies and gentlemen. That's not shorting the stock. Well, you know what I meant. No, I didn't. Okay. Yeah. Well, nothing but trouble on my mind. That's the attitude that got my ass off the sidelines. You either ride pine and cry about playing time, or you play the game divine, apply the pain, and embrace the grind. I was at this and that brings us to our point here. Where should, should we be looking paying at the, the bills? Should we be looking at a camera? Or we got two at different you? cameras. You uh, can look at me. You can. I usually just look at Alex though. Hey Alex. Hey Alex. Hey. Uh, Dry cleaning is expensive. Yeah, it really is. Adds up. I mean, Santa something Monica you got to think about. I paid twenty bucks for two shirts. Ah, uh, nineteen, yeah. I think. For I paid shirts. forty for uh, three shirts and a pair of pants. Forty bucks. Thirty. Thirty-five. I don't know. Corporate life, man. Well, welcome back to Finding Finance. I'm here with my good friend and coworker, more of a coworker than a friend, but his name <laughs> his name is Jimmy Bishrat. Um, not a CFP, but a really good FP. Uh, yeah. And um, really, he's known around here as the athlete advisor. Um, an athlete advisor, what is that? Well, watch the episode to find out. We're going to get into that today. Well, thanks for having me, man. I'm actually pretty excited to be the, the, the second episode ever. Yeah, definitely the second episode of Finding Finance. How does it feel? I mean, the fact that you chose me over everyone in this firm. I mean, I thought you would have definitely went with Mia for the first episode. You know, Ross was begging me. Danilo's begging me. Hitam's begging me. I'm like, guys, I got to do it with my man, Jimmy. Appreciate that, dude. Make sure that we can get uh, get on the show here. I feel like you're full of shit. No, no, no. Definitely, uh, definitely really excited for this. Oh, yeah. We, we bleep everything out. Like, <laughs> you know, it's fine. Fuck. Yeah, see, it's, it's kind of empowering a little bit. Fuck. The thing about the headphones is you get the headphones on and all of a sudden we enter our own little universe. 100%. Alex, can you say something? Hi, hi Jimmy. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Alex. Oh, man. All right, so what, what are we going to talk what about? What are we today? doing today? Well, I was going to meet with Mia, but guess what? Mia has COVID. R.I.P. I don't think she's dead. Why does Mia always get COVID? That's the first thing I'm just trying to figure out today. She's had COVID, what, like four or five times? Alex, you've been here longer than me. Yeah, like... Five, maybe. Five times. Five times. Oh. Listen to this. I got COVID once. And? And I lost my smell. Oh, Jimmy, your smell? My smell, dude. How was your taste? Taste was, taste, I mean, wasn't that great, but my, my smell was gone. It was actually trippy. I was putting on, you know that one stuff, the, the Vicks? Strong, strong Don't smell. know it. I think you know it. Putting it on, and all of a sudden I noticed, like, okay. I ain't smelling nothing. Mm. So I'm like, hold on, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. So what's the most potent smell you could think of? Mm, I'm not going to say that on the podcast. We won't say it on the podcast, but they can see us at our next 420 party where we're going to be handing this out. Sure. And I go and I open the jar up and I give it a smell. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. So how does my smell come back now? So it's gone for months. Mm. And we, you know, this is 21 or 22. I don't know. In the new year, we take sure. over my family's gas station. My family owns a gas station in San Diego. Right. And, and, <laughs> You got a joke to make, bub? Like, oh, on. No. You're making a point there. Go on. You got no jokes? All right. I'll continue. I wish my family owned a gas station, but we do own a basketball camp, so you tell me which is better. Hey, I'm the athlete advisor. I think yours is pretty cool. Yeah, and I'm the gas man. I think yours is pretty <laughs> cool. <laughs> so anyways, well, there's a, a local bum that would walk into this gas mm. station. Does he have a name? I, he had a name. It was Rick, mm. I think. His name was Rick. Dirty Rick. Dirty Rick. He used to be a lawyer. Mm. Yeah, the crazy, crazy story. But Rick comes in, and he would smell... 
like garbage. And he would do his lap around mm. the store, reek up the store, and I'm not smelling anything. My mom's like, you don't smell that? I'm like, no, I don't smell anything. Well, another week goes, and here comes Rick again, and he does one lap around me, and just a waft of human okay. terribleness. Sure. My smell was back. This is great and all, but you know, this podcast is about finance, right? Finance. Finance. What are we looking for? Weed's expensive, dog. Finance. Weed is expensive. And the taxes on that is crazy. And we have a lot of friends that are in the legal business, some of the biggest distributors, but it's so expensive. They have a hard time well, then, selling their product. And then and dispensaries, they can't write off any of their expenses. So it, being a dispensary. Damn. Owner, yeah. So it needs to be federally legal, which is, I don't know, Biden, what are we waiting for? And for the viewers back home, explain exactly what does write off mean for a business owner? So basically, let's say you got income, right? Now it's a great question, Chase. We're finding finance. We're I mean, finding finance. I think Alex I'm looks pretty happy with that question. Is, we are looking for something around here. T can you actually first tell me what you think a write-off is? Well, I obviously know what a write-off is. Do you? I own a pretty big bleach company. It's right. not officially on the books. Yeah, maybe so. you should keep that on the DL, okay? Yeah, well, we're actually lots of lots of money in debt, so there's no <laughs> there's nothing to report there. So tell me what a write-off is. So basically, um, if you are reinvesting a certain amount of money into your business, then you can write that off on your taxes. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, essentially, let's say you make a hundred grand, right? The f I need turbo tax for. Go on. If you if your bleach business is making as much as you say it is, maybe you should work with a real a CPA. Let's say your bleach business, you make a hundred thousand dollars selling these shirts, right? You crush it. You <laughs> Empire. Crush it. You're Go everywhere. On. You're everywhere. You're killing it. And let's say you had to pay forty thousand dollars for the shirts and ten thousand dollars for the bleach. Mm. And maybe another, I don't know, $5,000 in miscellaneous. $55,000. Good math, brother. Well, we'll have to take your $100,000 of income, mm -hmm. subtract out the $55,000 of expenses. Wow. We're left with? $45,000. And that is what you would be taxed on right there. So you wrote off that, huh. that 55K. You can write off more than 50% of what you're putting back into the business, Jerry? Yeah. Wow. You could, yeah. That's a lot of bleach right there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pretty sure you could write off 100%. You could, I believe, but I just didn't want to really sound confident. Yeah, you can write off everything. If you're not making money, you're not making money. What are you going to pay taxes on if you're making Oh, money? that's tax loss harvesting. Okay. No, that is not <laughs> tax loss harvesting. That's another great one. Do you know what tax loss harvesting is? I know is? about tax loss harvesting. So we'll get into that next episode. No, tell me what tax loss harvesting. We're talking about taxes today. I didn't know Jim the CPA tax is coming on the show. Tax loss harvesting. I'm not a CPA. I'm not a CPA. Okay, well, we need Ruth in here, clearly. <laughs> hey, we had a fun day with Ruth Our yesterday. new best friend, Ruth. Okay, tax loss harvesting for those back home. Basically, super simple. You cut out your net losses when you're investing. You can cut your losses or you sell at a loss, so then you don't have to actually pay taxes on the gains. So it might actually make more sense to... You know, let's say Apple's losing money, sell it a loss, and then take that money and reinvest it into something else rather than have to sell it, you know, when it's gained a lot of money and then you still have to pay a ton of taxes on it. Yeah, that's... I feel like Ben knows a lot about this stuff. Doesn't Ben know a lot about tax loss harvesting or... You're talking about like Ben Dunbar? Yeah, a partner or a company. Uh, yeah, he knows a thing or two I always about. feel like, I mean, a lot of people say tax loss harvesting, but I feel like Ben's always the one that's like really saying it. Don't you think? <laughs> I feel like he's like really into that. No? Yeah, yeah, he's really into it. I, I don't know. I, mean, I think any fi good financial advisor is going to know what tax loss harvesting is and is going to do it for their clients throughout the yeah, year. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously, but I'm just saying Ben's one of the best we have at this company, so obviously he knows more than you do about tax loss harvesting. Uh, 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 you know, Take ben, the hit, Jim. Take the hit. Ben's been doing it a little bit longer than me, yeah. He, you he might has. know more about tax loss harvesting than Ben the intern. Like, I'll give you that for sure, but... Well, I mean, tax loss harvesting is a concept. I think we know a lot. If I need my taxes lost harvested, Mr. Dunbar is the guy I'm going to go talk to. But you don't necessarily want to have a lot of losses to harvest. You know that, right? Really? No, I can give you a really good example okay. of tax loss harvesting. I did this for a client on Monday, actually. Okay. And we invested in a, you know, a semiconductor ETF for the client. What is so funny with you, dog? <laughs> I don't know. I invested in a, in a semiconductor <laughs> ETF for the guy. And... You know, on Monday, we had that little bit of a correction happen, and the market took a little bit of a... Just a little bit. We'll get into that. Yeah, we'll talk about that for sure, but it went down. Notes. And, you know, he had, let's say, X amount of losses. We'll use $1,000 in losses for this example. Damn. So what I went in there, I would sell his investment, 
and then move it to another ETF that's similar to it, you sure. know, that owns semiconductors. Sure. And then at that point, we're able to harvest that thousand dollar losses mm -hmm. while still owning, having exposure to semiconductors. Wow. Now the thing about tax loss harvesting is you cannot repurchase that investment for 30 days. If you repurchase oh, it, it's never here. You can't, you can't short the off. stock, ladies and gentlemen. That's not short in the stock. Well, you know what I meant. No, I didn't. Okay. Well, all I'm just trying to say is corrections are part of investing. So they go up, they go down. Don't freak out. Yeah. Tax it, loss harvest. Listen to Ben. Clearly he's paying it, attention it, in the meetings. There's actually a quote Ben gave us in the meeting on Monday. Did you, did you hear this one? Thank you. No, what did he say? So it's from his, he, Ben actually recommends his book to all his clients. And we Millionaire Next Door. Yeah, it's a good one. That's not the book. Mm. It's called The Psychology of Money. Psychology of Money. That was my other And one. honestly, yeah. if you haven't read that book and you're, you're into investing, mm. I highly recommend starting with this book. It, it's a read it. I do audiobooks actually. You don't have to force them to read. I'm oh. more, yeah, more of an audiobook type of guy. <laughs> the quote sure. is that this is the, the biggest market decline since mm. the last big market decline that we don't even know about, care about, and probably forgotten about. Meaning we're sure. always going through these market corrections and these downturns. Yeah. But the thing is, is you want to remain invested, mm -hmm. continue to dollar cost average. DCA. You know that term? Dude, I know about dollar cost averaging. Tell me about dollar cost averaging. All right. If you want to, I'll drop some knowledge for the people back home. But basically, here's the thing you want to do when you invest. Invest the same amount, um, whether that's weekly, monthly, monthly yearly daily invest the same amount de independent of how the market's doing and that is essentially the only way to invest that's proven to work efficiently investing a ton when it's down investing a ton when it's up that is a little bit more shaky a little bit more of a gamble than it is to just take make your budget sheet talk to your advisor about how much you want to <laughs> stop laughing alex i'm not laughing i was just waiting for jimmy to tell you that investing once yearly is probably not dollar cost averaging. We tend to like to dollar cost average for clients on a monthly basis. I'd say monthly. I mean, if I, mean, I was an advisor. Is that what you do? I might go monthly. Uh, do, you, do you dollar cost average monthly? Find out next episode when we talk to Mia Samson, my advisor. Oh. I am here with my good friend and colleague, Ziad Hijazi. Welcome to the show, Z. How we doing? Good to be here. Oh, I guess it'll probably be the episode before. Wait, I'm episode two. You said I'm episode two. This is literally episode two. You said, welcome did I say that? Yeah, you said, welcome to episode two. I'm, I'm episode two. Uh, I was still going with the bit. Um, yeah, this is episode two for sure. Right, viewers? You don't have any viewers. I'm probably your only viewer. Sorry. Right, Alex? <laughs> episode two. Uh, Finding finance. But no, dollar cost averaging is super important to do when you're investing because it's just, I don't have a crystal ball. Yeah. You don't have a crystal ball. No one knows what the hell is going to happen. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, no one can predict the future. Yeah. So who's to tell me this is a top or this is a bottom? I don't know. No one knows. So we average in, we average in. I want, you, I want the viewers to look at all their investments. And what do you think one of the top performing accounts you're going to have is? Ooh, 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 ooh. Chase, Chase. NVIDIA. No, probably, probably not that. It's going to be your 401k. Because Got one of those, baby. And you put money into it? Boom, boom. Still don't know the password yet, but we'll talk about that later. Don't even know my password, baby. Account locked. You have exceeded the maximum number of attempts allowed to unlock your account. Please validate your identity. Huh. Do you know what a 401k matches? Oh, yeah. And let me tell you about one of the best things about this company is we match. And what is a match? So basically, you swipe, you swipe, you swipe. If you swipe on them and they swipe on you, Alex, I gotta go. That's some real work. Done, dude. I can't <laughs> go. Chase, you're trying to get this show approved by Danilo and Ross. You know that, right? Yeah, I just so be myself, man. I, Alex edits around all this. I don't even know what he did. He's with able the first to edit episode. this to get posted. This guy is a fucking wizard. He's a wizard. <laughs> wizard. <laughs> Sorry. Is that Josh Bell? Josh? <laughs> Holy miracle! <laughs> I tried to do my wisdom. Alex, please, please cut in a version of Josh there saying is it a right Josh next Peck. to him. No, we <laughs> All right, viewers. So I know what you've all been waiting for, and that's our weekly or whatever. Yeah, let's say weekly. This is a weekly podcast. Our weekly update on my current financial situation. So where were you at last episode? 56 bucks? I had $56 to my net worth. And now one week later, which means this is episode yeah. two. Yep. You're at? Well, 
I just want to preface this by saying I I paid all my bills, so that's what's really important. Paid my mo- month's rent. Did we already talk about how expensive dry cleaning is, or was that yeah, we was talked that in the I don't preseason? Know that, Did we get that, that was in the prequel? Oh. I paid twenty bucks for two shirts. We <laughs> talked for about five ten minutes about how expensive dry cleaning is. It's insane. And I wish that Mia could have been here to see that because she doesn't like when I complain about expenses. Expensive dry cleaning. Do you complain about it often? Pretty often, yeah. I'm pretty disappointed about how much I pay. I feel you. Yeah, dude. So, let's see. I've got $314 in my checking, $759 in my savings. Nice, dude. Bills paid, though. That's what you got to know. Bills are paid. So, we're up like over over $1,000? Then I checked my, um, what's it called? Credit card. Who's your credit card through? Debt, right? Credit card debt. Yeah, who's your credit card with? Um, shouldn't say because my name brand Chase actually rejected me. So yeah, but it's a first credit card. I've only had one. I've had it for like nine months now. So I kind of made a mistake with my first credit card. I, Tell I, me about I, it. I got a Capital One one and then I got my Chase Sapphire because I got approved on yeah. someone I know. So <laughs> what do you do for this company? Um, let's think. What do I do for you? Why don't you tell me what you think I do for this company? How about you ask that question again and actually answer it? Okay, which question? Because because at some point, people have to learn like actually what it is you do here. Yeah, we, we did cut that all out last episode. Yeah. Um, did we talk about how I share the desk with Ross, though? That was in there, yeah, right? Yeah, you said that. All right, cool. So, uh, can we take it back a second? <laughs> Why are we doing? What is the pur- what is the purpose of well, this we, podcast? You, I thought you were doing good with your whole. This is why I up my credit story that we're cooking yeah, there. Do you want me to go? Yeah, on I want to know. Like I, I want so. the viewers back home might yeah. screw themselves over getting into bad credit. I didn't get bad credit. What happened was I basically had a Capital One card and then sure. I got my Chase and I'm like, oh, I don't need two credit cards. Do I need all this for? So yeah. I canceled my Capital One card. Oof. Apparently, you're not supposed to cancel your card when you said. I didn't know that. Is that real? Yeah, it's a real thing. Are you joking? I'm, I'm not a credit card expert, okay. but if you, you check the Google, it'll it'll yeah. tell you that. This is important. Don't cancel your credit card. Yeah, not a good idea. Is there ever a time when you should be able to cancel it? I mean, dude, there's some people I've met with, like some clients I'll meet with that got like eight different credit cards. Okay. If Macy's offers them a card, they want it. Home Depot, Jesus. Amazon, this, that. And it's like, you do not want to have all yeah. that credit card. You yeah, don't yeah, want to yeah. have a bunch of credit cards. You pay all the payments. on. It gets hard to manage. Credit card debt is cancer. Yeah. I mean, when you work with people. No, 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 no. Let me say that one more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Credit card debt is financial cancer. Mm. When I meet with a client, I see they got credit card debt. That is the first thing we got to fix. You got to cut the cancer out before we can get better, before That's we can true. get stronger. That's true. You can, if you have credit card debt, make that your number one priority. Because $1,000 in credit card debt with 30% interest rate, that's 1300 next year. And then that accumulates and it compounds yeah. and it compounds and it compounds and it's gonna snowball the wrong way. Mm. And while you're trying to build assets, your liabilities are gonna be far exceeding that. Yeah. And that is a losing game that you don't wanna be a part of. Yeah, I mean, I was always like, I at first was a little upset because my dad always told me like all throughout college, I was so poor. He's like, you're not ready for a credit card. It's just, you'll get one when you're ready, get a job first, do this, this, and this. And I always kind of thought that was effed up. My friends would use credit cards. They'd go out, they'd have fun. But I didn't get one until I started my job here. And I actually, through all the issues that I've gone through trying to pay off my credit card, I've you know thankfully managed every month, but it's come pretty close sometimes. Biggest issue I see is when I meet with clients and they're like, oh yeah, I feel like I should get a credit card set up. Yeah. I'm like, dude, what are you worrying about a credit card right now when you don't even have any investment accounts set up or you yeah. don't even have an emergency? Like, it's just skipping steps. And the yeah. reason for this all comes back to lack of education. Sure. Think Roth about what, 401B. What C. do we talk about as a society in America? We people want about, to get their credit cards. Uh, if somebody buys a new car, people s- clap for them. Hey, yeah, good job, hey, you got a new car. APR, right? right? They're paying interest on it. Yeah. It's a debt. We're celebrating debts. We're celebrating liabilities. True. Somebody gets a Roth IRA, they're looked at like a nerd. Yeah, bro. They're like a weirdo. Why do you have that? Yeah. But if an 18-year-old kid can start a Roth IRA today mm. and start letting that money compound, yeah, starting at 18 versus 28 is a hell of a big difference. Why do you think Warren Buffett's so rich? The yeah. guy has been letting his money compound in the markets for so long, and now he's old as hell. It's true. And his money is compounded year over year over year over year, and that is why he's where he's at. Yeah. He didn't become a millionaire until I think it was like his 50s. Maybe, Alex, yeah. you could check that one for us. But No, I read it. Ross actually sent an article this week. He, didn't, he made over half his money after the time that he was 50, and then 
didn't become or after the time he was 40 and then didn't become a billionaire till he was 50. Yeah, but the problem is everybody wants to get rich yesterday. People oh. want to find the next big meme stock, the next game stock, the next yeah. this, the next that. Just let your money f- compound in the market and yeah. it's going to work. Basically the whole reason we're trying to achieve financial literacy or uh freedom, financial freedom I only hope is so we can get 10 grand, move to Hawaii, spend the rest of my life caring about this girl's wants and needs every second of every day that's pretty dope cut that out my dream i mean i I honestly if i didn't do what i was doing i wasn't trying to help athletes from going broke Mm -hmm. i'd be living in panama panama yeah i'd have a fish taco cart panama yeah yeah, i'd have fresh fish bring brought to me every morning make tacos have a really i'd probably have a perfect recipe for my salsa and i'd sell it pretty well That'll be my life. Jimmy, you're about the last guy I buy salsa from. but No, not uh, salt. You're buying my fish tacos. I have like a, it, it'll be special, man. Okay. I'll probably do like a mango type of pico. I've actually seen you cook a little bit. I'm a pretty good cook. Yeah. Yeah. So what else? Mia has COVID. I have $200, but here's the thing I forgot. What? I didn't pay my electric yet. I haven't paid my electric yet. Ooh. What do you think I owe on this last bill? See, I've been using the AC. I don't want to know. I'm not even logging into my account. They keep emailing me. You try stiffing them? I'm I've not stiffing them. I'm, a, I'm only a month deep. I made it three months deep without paying before. I've stiffed before, but then I realized they charge you a fee, and I'm like, damn. Do you guys not have auto pay set up? No. No. Why? For electric? For Fuck. everything. F- them. I don't want them to just charge my Wait. car. I don't, I don't pay any bills just by going. It just happens. Really? Every month. Wow. Yeah. Should we set that up? That's how you know he's rich. I know. <laughs> This guy's good. Amount due. Auto pay. Amount due. You can't just take a month off ever, Alex. Amount due seventy five dollars and sixteen cents for my oh, my one bedroom. That's, fine. that's not bad. I use AC pretty pretty heavily last month. That means I've got like if I subtracted that much, I got like one twenty five still. But I'm getting paid next Wednesday, so that's what you guys got to realize. So payday's coming up. Payday. Jimmy's like mostly cut out of this. <laughs> Are you serious? Not mostly. I mean, you're mostly in it, but you're like, <laughs> on, somehow you drifted. Too. Well, the mic move. Here, Chase, let me get close to you. Chase smells bad, man. Do I really? No, nah, you smell fine. Now you're, now you're Am I better right here? My pants on Tuesday, oh, so. You can't stop. I actually did. So did we just waste Pay that whole hour? I mean, it's fine. Should we no, just redo fine. it from the top? I mean, we haven't said anything yet. Oh, we got some good clips, I feel like. No, we're, yeah, let's just keep going. Um, what else you want to talk about? You're, you were saying that your bank account has these different numbers in it, and then Jimmy was like, oh, you're up by $1,000, but you hadn't mentioned the credit card debt, credit card debt. or the yeah. what you owe your dad. Oh, so I'm technically still... So, I guess that would mean if I have... So less than... So I had less than 200, so we'll call that 200. Let's say electric 75, because I do split it. So let's, we're at 125, plus I owe my dad a thousand bucks. If I ever can find the password to my 401k, then that could be another thousand bucks too. It's just your paychecks account. It wasn't his 401k, it was his Roth he was trying to get into. My Roth. Well, it's a Roth 401k and a Roth IRA, I think, but. Do you know the difference between an IRA and a 401k? Yeah, 401k is matched, baby. No, really, what's the difference between Thank you, Danilo. He, he also can't get in, so he can't get into his account view uh, or his paychecks, I think. So what's that one of them? I don't know the difference, but I got one of them. It's about a thousand bucks in there, I think. We didn't talk about the salad, though, what, by the way. You, go, but you were doing so good. <laughs> no, but seriously, we didn't talk about the salad yet. What's salad? Oh, I didn't like it. You didn't like it? No, that dressing is whack. And honestly, maybe really? maybe it was a little better because I didn't really use the dressing. I was just eating lettuce and, and chicken. Oh, raw salad, disgusting. All right, so you guys were, you guys were talking about <laughs> his Roth IRA. No, tell me the I'll difference between notes. an IRA. Right no, this here. could be a Congratulate good Jimmy on having a real girlfriend. So that's one. How about you guys like actually calculate what your net worth is right now? All right, let's see your net worth, and then I want you to tell me the difference between IRA and 401k. I thought I was negative. You're not negative net worth. Can I come around? Am I able to move it? Oh, this moves like this? Jesus, buddy. Dude, sit together. Look at that. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Smile, smile. Smile for the cam. You want to look at my... Dude, let's keep looking at your camera. That's my f***ing camera. Buddy. That's your... That's Don't not, look at that's Alex, either. <laughs> look at Alex. Don't look at Alex. You get that view of Alex, hey, dude? Baby. He's looking so good over there, dude. I know. Hey, Alex. All right, let's, so let's go through your net worth. Dude, what do you I have in your... The f- passwords i didn't really try to look. why then why are we doing this episode right now if you weren't was, prepared for this i was then, interviewing what am I here for? that's for my episode with mia this okay is so for my episode we, with you alex wants me to talk about this with you okay fine do you want to not talk about this with you calculate it every, subject, every okay. episode we have to have an update on what you're doing so, okay one what's 125 minus a thousand i thought you were 775 dollars I, th- I thought you owed him two thousand no i paid it Paid a thousand. So since last week, you've given him a thousand. Since last week, I paid my bills, gave my dad a thousand, 
And that's why I have no money anymore. And I went on some nice dates, too. But, you know. Who'd you take out? What was that post about yesterday? You find love or something? I don't remember the post. Yeah. Uh, all right. These are the things I wrote down. How did it all start for you, Jimmy? What, is, what about you? Just tell me about your journey with love, with finance. We still haven't gotten to a net worth number yet. Just get a net I got it right here. Negative $775. How did it go down more? But you haven't added your any of your retirement accounts or your other account. So can you lock, go to go to paychecks.com? Right, let's, let's try to get it, locked let's down. Let's do it. Paychecks. Is this it? Yes. Okay. Paychecks flex. Correct. See, look, I'm in. I want them for sure. Verification code. Okay. All right. right. Write down the number. Write down the number. Let's go. 1,878. 73. Damn. I thought it was 78. And 79 cents. Okay, so boom, we're at, we're back in the green, so baby. No, notice what I told you earlier in this in this episode. What's most that bag in? And what's I, most have I been matched big, yet, though? Have I been matched yet? Yeah, you have right there from your employer, two hundred forty four dollars. So to so to that's back, just from last year, though. To go back to our original point, a match is literally free money from your company. What's my okay. other account yeah, on? Um, go to LPL account view. Why don't we just call Mia? Can access your account, so we can just call her. I to don't want to bother account. her with that. Shit. I'll figure it out. I'm an adult, you know. Be for investors. Let's see. All right. All right, can you? But notice what your biggest asset is right now for you. It's your 401k, and that's because you've been dollar cost averaging in it every paycheck without even knowing what you're doing. That's true. Uh, I'm this serious. is what Mia was supposed to say in this episode, but. Why do you, you really want to give this episode to Mia, didn't you? I, I got Alex. I really feel like I should go. Look who's in. Look, I got him locked in and everything. Nope. Password. I might know it, though. Password. Yeah, that's yeah, positive. That Te- yeah, I think you got a text message. Text message. Why would you make? I'm more of a phone call kind of guy. Really? <laughs> that's psychotic. I didn't think anyone selected that option. That bag in you wouldn't ever see me bold. Can't hear it. System, your code is zero seven six one eight. We're in. Let's go. Oh, how much you got? Yeah. Now? Oh, wow. Wow. Boy. Let's go like this. All right. Can I write? Can I no, write? You're no. Saying, you're not doing it right. Let me do no. it. No. It's like when my mom would try to do all my homework. For <laughs> me. I need another Celsius, man. You crush him. That bag in. You were, all right. Damn, bro. My retirement's popping. All right. I'll total it up. Actually, we don't. Yeah. You. The last thing you need is a Celsius. Let's be honest. No, I don't want more Celsius. That's what I'm saying. Seven, eight plus 1878. Wow, forty eight hundred dollars. That's crazy. In investments. All right, so you that's got- good. But here's the thing: is it all gonna crash and burn now that the market just got? F- uh, that probably, honestly, with where you're at in your life and your age, you want the market to go down. Genuinely. That's another thing I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, talk to me, brother. Talk to me. So We're the market's the down. Yeah. Some people think it's a good thing. Some people think it's a bad thing. What do you, What are your thoughts? In what sense? Is this a time to be sad? Is this a time to be happy? I mean, it's like I talk to the rich people, like the partners at our company, and they're like, I'm finally excited because I can buy a bunch more stock. And then I talk to the poor people, and they're all mad because their portfolios are down. So what what is the real tea here? The real tea is the market's doing what the market does. and the market, Corrections are normal, everybody. And the market will always do what the market wants to do. Yeah. You know, uncertainty is obviously going to lead to some more volatility like we're seeing right now. And when you hear the headlines are really packaging everything up together from what's going on in Japan, what's going on with Warren Buffett, what's sure. going on with unemployment, with the election coming up. Yeah. And let's not forget, right now we're off to historically one of the best starts ever to an election year in the market. Wow. So the market's I had crushing. No idea. Yeah, the market's crushing this year. You know, we've had a little bit of a correction right now, but it's 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 perfectly normal. Is this because of NVIDIA or is this different vibes or? AI absolutely has something to do with it. Okay. AI has caused the market to, to definitely rip and you see it because every single company is trying to say the buzzword sure. AI in the AI, news. Yeah. Everyone wants to say AI, 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 I was watching this whole thing on, uh, about, I forget what it was called, like the AI investing. Professor Galloway was talking about this. I'll Why come back to it. you Professor Galloway? I'll come back to it. Well, see, the thing is I cut the clips for the people and then they uh, end up, they didn't end up using them for their podcast, but I still cutting some stuff up. It was like all about, it was like chat AI something. 
What else talk about that later. Well, let's talk about the Olympics and finals. How much later? Right? How much later? Well, I, I've technically got a meeting in four minutes, but with who? Elizabeth is a big supporter of this podcast. I don't think she'll mind if I'm a little bit late. Should maybe text her. But all right, so I am a social media. Blah, blah, blah. What is my title? Social media and events coordinator. Okay. Okay. So what does that entail? First of all, the first word in that is social media. So I manage a lot of the social media, if not all, for the company. I don't manage Ross's Twitter, you know, solely. I go on there sometimes. I'm not allowed to write anything or like anything, but, you know. The fact that you even have access to Twitter kind of scares me. It's a trust thing. And the thing about me is I'm very trustworthy, and I'm actually a good listener and rule follower when I need to be. I post on social media. Also, follow us on threads, too. I've kind of been boosting our threads a little bit. We had a thread that got over 40,000 views today. Nice. Still feeling good on that. So, f- posting on social media, yeah. job one. YouTube. Posting on YouTube. That's still yep. social media. What else? Oh, well, that's So, like, what's media. events coordinators? What so are events? So, events coordinators. So, like, today, I'm coordinating a big happy hour next Wednesday. You RSVP'd. You RSVP'd. Alex will be there. Yeah, so just talking to them about the plan, Is like Baker the cost of food. Bakers, dude. B- Baker, I'm talking Dan Mazzara. Dan Mazzara? I'm talking Nico. Nico? Brett. Wait, Demon Town's going to be there? Me and Brett squashed the beef today, too. I'm still sorry I, I f***ed something up for you, Brett. But that leads me to another thing I do is I, I probably shouldn't say this on air, but I, you know, write out all of the commentaries that, like, like when people want to send a mass message out to their clients, they send it to me first, and then I put it into all the algorithms. And I also, you know, write your scripts. Remember when I write your scripts, and then I direct you when you do it, so you sound like a little bit more... Um, understandable you know and even my you know, articles are not that bad well you know we'll talk about that off air but i think the biggest thing i could work on is probably just you know directing you to what to do with your hands during your videos because it's still like a little bit of you know that like you know that macklemore song it's like what do i do i'm my gonna hand? pop some tags i think that is a song yeah four dollars in my pocket no, you got like 4800 in your pocket doggy damn feels good to be rich don't it Man, that's the what perks. else do I? You know, know what that the perks of? Huh. That's the perks of what kind of day? Compound interest, baby. I was going with payday. Never mind. Payday. Welcome back to the payday podcast. Man, that should be I'm your host. Um, it could be. It could be. So let's talk about the Olympics and finance before we go. This is actually really important. I was going to talk about PZ and Ice Vezo. Just announced their tour, but we could talk about Olympics. Wait, we're not done talking about what you do. So you, oh yeah, so events you put on the happy hour. Like, do you do events for like clients, or is it for like events for us? A little both, you know. Like Stephen, Stephen Z are having a dinner party. Like I'll go there, take pictures. You know, your thing yesterday. I was like showed up. You got any good pics from that? Yeah, dude, I got you a picture with the GM. Is it a good one? It's really good, actually. Really? Yeah. Send them my way. Well. I got to um, download them all. Have Alex edit them. All right. Olympics and finance. What do we need to know about how... He, he's just taking the topic of the other podcast we filmed today. <laughs> Shut the f*** up, Alex. Did they talk about finance? Here's the thing. Yeah, the I, whole thing was about the Olympics and finance and the Olympics. Well, he's also the athlete advisor. Yeah, I thought I maybe it would be, be worth... Okay, then why don't you teach uh, Jimmy about it? Yeah, tell yeah, me about it. Well, here's what I was going to say is that when you're looking at these streaming companies, it's not as important about about the actual content as it is like because apple is a massive tech company they're actually going to do a lot better than you know someone like a streaming company that's sole job is just content so it's like how could amazon ever fail amazon's not the best content on prime but where do you even watch the olympics isn't that like peacock i alex puts it on the screen for me while i work what's it on alex peacock peacock it's on on peacock peacock So what will that do for the global economy? What will it do for it? Mm-hmm. Pretty sure like the Olympics is, I, I, not for the, on a more like micro scale, I'm pretty sure like the, the countries that host the Olympics end up losing sure. every year because it's yeah. like they put, they invest so much in their, in their, in their city. And then also I heard a like, fact today that the only city to ever lose money from the Olympics was LA. Is that true, Alex? The only c- city to ever make money. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Huh. But I mean this, so think about what the Olympics is though. Yes. Like the Olympics is literally a showcase for your city from people from other countries. So meaning people, let's say the rich people from like, I don't know, Greece and all these places, mm. they're all balling Italy and they're coming here sure. for the Olympics. Sure. They come out to Santa Monica and they're like, damn, this place is really nice. You yeah. know, it's clean. It's awesome. I'm going to buy another Certain beach parts, here. Yeah. 
Well, that's why they're going to have to clean up. I promise you Santa Monica is going to look a lot cleaner in two years when the Olympics are here because this is wait. LA's chance to showcase Four the years. city. Four years? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess it's right now. Kind of mm -hmm. fried. Bad math. Do you have any final, like, really important tips? Like, what are the most important things young investors should be doing right now? Investing. Investing, learning the difference between a 401k and uh, IRA. Do you know what the difference is? I go Roth on, I got, make sure they're both Roth, but yeah. What's the difference between the two? One's matched. No, that's not. By Ross I'm, and Danilo, thank you. Again, that is a positive of you. one of them, but what's the difference, seriously, what the di what's the difference between a 401k and an IRA? The spelling? I don't know. <laughs> 401k mm -hmm. is employer sponsored. Right, and matched. Yeah. Not all companies offer a match. You, you're lucky Ross no. and Danilo really so like said, you. And I'm serious, guys. Thank you. Seriously, like you see this, my net worth would be very different without you. Probably. And I actually haven't been matched though because it's still middle of the year. So next year it's going to boom. And again, thank you. So 401k, employer sponsored. It's through your employer. Think about it. Nobody has a 401k it's if true. it's not through their company. So and you're telling me anyone can get a Roth IRA? An IRA is an individual retirement account. So most of our listeners are actually unemployed living on someone's couch. You need to have earned income mm. to put money in an IRA. Okay. So if, let's say you make 10 grand that year, you could put money in your IRA. So they're not going to ask where the money's coming from though. Well, it needs to be reported. Okay. So we know the difference. So can I repeat that back? Well, you don't know the difference. Yeah. Well, I mean, I so the other one's an IRA. But yeah. Basically 401k is employee sponsored employer. That's not the only difference though. Oh, Alex. What else is there, Alex? Immigration customs enforcing. <laughs> Stop searching ICE. Sorry. It's just pictures of ICE, too. It wasn't even any immigration. Oh, man. Um, how's it feel to see three grand in that's that account? Crazy. Yeah, it's really cool. Love I just that. want to thank God, honestly. And you know, I've said this before. I'll say it again. In many ways, I see God in the form of Mia Samson. So thank you both for this. <laughs> and it's started. only getting started. That's the value of compound interest. And doing. That's and the doing. value of doing. Imagine doing. if you never started investing. You yeah. ain't going to have shit there. You would have spent that money, dude. It's kind of like what Alex told us about paying your bills is the same thing about how you should be investing. Just take the money out automatically, put, put that into your budget, and next thing you know, you got $4,800. That's spot on. No, you pay oh. yourself first. You pay, treat pay it like yourself a first. Good shit, dude. That's actually really good. You're Show listening me the your money, advisor. baby. Show me the money, Show baby. Show me the money, baby. Lee Steinberg. Yeah, and that's the thing is like, you know, I might only have negative... What was it? Seven seventy five. But then we put up, we put up the four grand, and we're rich again. Can I touch that money? Well, actually, based off Jimmy's article that I read not long ago, you can actually take a thousand dollars off penalty free. Absolutely, you can. And actually, in a Roth IRA, you could pay out. You could take out what you put in. Yeah. So if you put in four grand into it and it becomes forty eight hundred, yeah, you could still pull out that four grand. Wow. It's the eight hundred dollars that you'd get penalized in tax if you tried pulling. I had no idea about that. There you go. Take that's always been the rule. It's been the rule. Wow. Yeah. Not many people know that one. Damn. But you don't want to do that. You when you put the money in the IRA, you want it to treat it like you put it in a dumpster and you lit it on fire and you forget yeah. about it for sixty years. The point Jimmy's trying to make and look at me right in the eyes, camera. Don't pull out. Leave are, that money in there. Are we done here? What's compound the, what's, interest? What's the other difference between the four hundred one k and the Roth? Oh yeah, IRA? you you were gonna say that. No, I was I was gonna. I mean, I know. Yeah, but I was gonna Jimmy. See if you guys were gonna get to that. All right, Jimmy, I got one question for you. What is the other difference between the Roth four hundred one k and the Roth IRA? There's a few of them. Okay. One, how much you can put into it. Sure, and there's a yearly amount. I believe it's about. Is it twenty three thousand this year? Yeah, yep. and the four hundred one k. They say I don't do. Around here, I added articles, baby. What's the one in the what about in the Roth IRA? What's the Roth most? is only like 12, I think. I think it's like seven or there eight, seven thousand. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, I'll probably max that thing out by you know, what is it, August? So, give me a couple more. You have until f until the tax deadline of next year, so April next year. Once I start getting bonuses, those things are getting maxed out. Is that what you do with that? I mean, what's your goals with your money? What do you want? Well, we talked about this last week, but first, I want to get a thousand dollars, then I want to get two thousand dollars, and then I want to get Three thousand dollars. What do you want to do with the money? You know, like get ten k, move to Hawaii, spend time with the love of my life, and oh, wow. live out every second of every day just to make her happy. That's amazing. Yeah. Let's do. Let's put together a plan and do it. Well, I've already got a financial advisor, Jimmy, but nice try. Damn, I wouldn't want you as a client. You probably wouldn't. Oh, you're yeah, al you're almost halfway there. 
That's yeah. true. What do you mean? You might have to raise that limit to, to $10,000. I want no, liquid. He, no, I, I want, want liquid. Only. That's like yeah. 1300 So where do you want that $10,000 to be? I want like liquid in my bank account, 10 k plus whatever is going to be in my... See, that's the thing about compound interest. And that's the point we're trying to make is I put the money in and I could never put another cent into my uh, compound interest accounts, but they're going to keep compounding more and more and more and make me way more money than if I would have put more money in later in life. I flew private last week. Oh yeah. How was that? It was f- dope. Dude. Yeah, that was really cool. What was the water that they gave you? Uh, F- no, yeah, it was Fiji. Don't say Aquafina. No, Fiji? It was, it was Fiji. Right, cool. yeah, they yeah. Fiji. No Voss? No Voss. Avion? No Avion. All right. Fiji. I was sipping Casamigos. Were you really? Yeah. Nice. They got limes on They board. had no champagne. Oh. I want a mimosa. I always imagine my first time flying private, like the scene in Iron, Iron Man, when they get the stripper pulls out and then all the flight attendants. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've learned something. I'm leaving here this week with somewhat something, whatever 4,800 minus 7075 is. So that's actually, let's think about it, $4,000 and $4,025. That's where we're out for next week. Um, I just want to say a big shout out to my good friend, co-host. Well, he was going to be my co-host, but I decided I want to do this podcast alone. Sorry, Jimmy. He's just too busy. That's really the problem is that he's too busy for a weekly episode. But this is going to be someone that you're going to be seeing a lot more on this podcast. Not only is he a great financial advisor, but we've really become great friends, especially bonding over our love for sports. So, you know, hopefully that, hopefully Alex is going to edit this to something that's going to be coherent, something that we're going to be able to show the rest of the company. And hopefully we're going to be able to have my good friend, Jimmy Beshrat back on the podcast. Thank you so much for coming on, buddy. Chase. Love you, man. Love you, bro. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Thanks, Alex. Compounding interest. Nothing but trouble on my mind. That's the attitude that got my ass off the sidelines. You either ride pine and cry about playing time or you play the game.